Hello there, I'm Chef Johnny and this is Texas Style Cuisine. Appreciate you stopping by. Today, we're cooking up a brisket. You can probably see smoke flowing up in front of me. We've got the barrel house cooker going. It's warming up, getting up to temperature. And we're going to drop about a 16 pound brisket in there. So stay tuned and let me show you how we hang a brisket. We're going to get started trimming up this brisket. We'll get it out of the plastic. And, you know, I'm not going to take a whole lot of fat off of it. I think it protects it a little bit from the, from the heat. In this uh, barrel house cooker, what I'm going to do is I do have a water pan I'm going to put in the bottom of it. So we're going to have a little liquid. I like to uh, have some moisture when I'm cooking my briskets. So you will see a pan down in the bottom and a little water in that. But we're just going to. Get this brisket up out of the plastic and uh, let y'all see what we do to it. I've got another brisket on there. You can see me cooking on my pit maker barbecue vault. And it's one of the first videos I ever put out. But it's on there. So if you want to see me cooking it, kind of how we did that one. We're not going to put just a ton of seasoning on this. But I have enough on there that it well, has a good flavor. And, uh, of course, this is the point. That's the thick end. Flats down here. Good uh, fat cap across the, the flat. And I'm just going to take some of this big fat off of it. I'm not, if you can tell, just right there, you're starting to get thin where I can tell there's meat there. That's darn sure as deep as I want to go. This slash here is from the, uh, from the butcher, not from me. Up here on this fat end, you're going to have a thicker little fat cap. And all that's going to do is, is just drip down, get in your way. If you, if you want to, you can, uh, heck, you can leave that on there, especially if it was going toward the fire. It protected a little bit, but I'm not just going to take a, a ton of fat off of this. little bit down here off the flat a lot of this is not it doesn't it's just not covered up with fat let's flip this one around see what we can do here you can see what I'm doing here I've got a little fat right there that we can bring off again though it's this is not a real fatty brisket it's a select I think is what I say it may not be a, it may just be a packer you know, I think this is, this is just a swift packer. So it's not even graded, but I tell you what, but it turns out good. You know, a lot of people think if you don't have a prime brisket or a choice brisket, you just can't cook a good brisket. Well, let me tell you what, there were a lot of good briskets getting cooked before anybody in this country ever knew about cooking a prime brisket. They'd never heard of such. My daddy and my uncles and some of the, if you go back, I was in a barbecue tag, heck, year, year and a half ago, and asked me who uh, had taught me a lot. Oh, John Nagel and Alfred Carroll. Those guys never cooked a prime brisket in their lives, but I tell you what, they cooked a lot of good briskets. And they are tender. You do what, you do it right, you watch your temperatures, and you can cook up a darn good brisket. Now, if I wanted to, I could go into this and get some of that fat between the, the point and the flat, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get some of this loose hanging right here. We can flip this over, show you the other piece I always get off, and that's this piece right here. Let me turn this around where it's kind of looking at the camera, but this hard piece here. Now, some of this on these grade ones. You could clean this up, especially if you're doing a competition. You'd want to clean this brisket up. This is not a competition. This is just for us to eat here at the house. But that hard fat right there is not going to render down. It's not a good fat. So I'll take that piece off. There we go. That's off there. 
this is just some fat that's again in between the flat and the point separating those two muscles there's two muscles flats going this way points going this way and there's a fat line between them now some of this big chunk of fat right here I'm gonna take off a big part of it that just doesn't need to be on there but like I said for at the house you do not have to just clean these up terribly that's not bad right there it's looking pretty good I think that's all I'm going to do to it I'm going to take my brisket rub and this is a uh, that is not brisket rub that's chili powder I'm going to go get my brisket rub now we got brisket rub shake it up good I'll put a recipe down below for my, my brisket rub and I'm just going to come in here and start coating you know you can this is a big heavy piece of meat it'll it'll handle a lot of a lot of spice a lot of seasoning use my hand here to catch it put it up on the edges get those edges good in the past I've done it and you could if you wanted to hatch mark this uh, fat you could and let that season get a little down closer to the meat wouldn't be nothing wrong with that at all it's a nice even coat let this sit for a second check my temperature on my pit see where it's at then I'm going to come back and I'll put a second coat of another seasoning on top of this one. If you look at this brisket up close, you can tell its juices are start coming to the top. It's, it's drawing some water out. And uh, so we've got a kind of a moisture that's over this brisket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with my second rub now. And just go lightly on top. This is a just a barbecue rub that I get from... Uh, pit maker one of theirs and we're gonna put it right up on the top it's just their barbecue spice they've got a lot of really good rubs Don brisket like that one real good Let's see if we sprinkle a little bit up here on top Let's go back to our meat side you can tell that it's rendered out a lot of juice We're going to get this brisket in there now and to do that I'm going to have to uh, daisy chain it so I'm going to get a a few uh, hooks in here and even with the extension on this one it's a fairly long brisket we don't want it to be hanging down in our water pan so we're going to hang it up kind of high get this point up close to the top so our bottom's not down in our in our uh, water tank water trough got some hooks in there so let's let's see if we can get that in there and it not hit my water trough pop that lid off of here take my H brace and just kind of put it in the brisket in at the same time Hang it right there. Now, uh-oh, get a little flare up. That's one thing you don't want. You have too much, have that lid off too long. You can get a little heat in there, get a little flare up. So we'll take it off, put that down. 
Now, we've got it in there. It's up, it's cooking. We're gonna try to run this about 275. I figure about nine, 10 hours later, it'll be ready. So I'm gonna make sure this levels off, gets a good and consistent temperature. Then I'm gonna go lay down for a little while and we'll check on it in about uh, two or three hours after that. It's about six o'clock in the morning and uh, pit's starting to cool down some. It's been running about 280 all night long, held it. Right now it's down about 240. I was out here about three o'clock. Uh, so three hours ago it was fine. But we're probably starting to get low on charcoal. And I'm gonna back the camera off some more and let you see the great advantage of the barrel house cooker over other barrel cookers. So here's the neat thing about it. You can grab the handles, Pick it up. And like I thought, a little low on charcoal. Gonna get going again, It'll be just fine. Let's pick this back up. There we go. It didn't even stay warm because lid and everything was on it. Came off, sat it down, put it back up. We're full of fuel, ready to go. Now that's handy. That is just that just works really nice. So. Refueled it. It stayed warm in the in the uh, in the pit. Didn't have to take the lid off. Moved it to the side. Everything worked fine. I mean that's that is a great great advantage. We're gonna take this out and wrap it. Now it's so uh, about 7:30, so we've got about eight and a half hours on it, and there is a lot of beautiful color on this. So let's see, let me take my. And I'm fixing to lose it if I ain't careful. I'm gonna pick this up. I'm gonna have to take the H brace out with it. I can't slip it through, so. Lids on. Let me show you how I wrap this. You see where my top hook was trying to slip out right there? Or darn near did. Bottom one was still in good. It's a little different just from hanging it. You know, that, that the process of hanging it's just different. We're gonna wrap this. I tell you what shocks me is is the the tenderness of the bark. This bark is just really nice and tender. It's not real hard. Right up here on the top, I got a little bit of hardness, which is probably just fat. But overall, it's 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 got a real nice texture of the bark that I really do like. And I did a small brisket, it's the first big brisket I've ever done in, in this barrel smoker. Now in my ugly drum smoker, I've cooked a lot of briskets, but as far as this uh, barrel house, this is the first one, so we're just gonna try to get it wrapped nicely. I'm gonna kinda go the other direction this time, that's why I got two pieces. Now, I'm going to get this back in the cooker. I'm going to set it down on the grate, let it finish cooking. So, it's been on about eight hours. I figure about another two hours. But we're going to put the high grill mini back in it, track that temperature of it, bring it up to that 200 to 205, probe it, see how it feels. We want that uh, hot knife into butter feel. And if we're there, we'll pull it whenever we reach the feel, not necessarily the temp. Put that in there, fat side down toward the flame. Put my eye grill mini back in here, going into the thick end. Lids back on. We're going to let this cook 
oh, about an hour, hour and a half. Watch the temperature the whole time. We get it close to that 200, we'll, we'll get it out of there, but track yet, I figure another hour and a half, two hours, this brisket will be ready. You can see this brisket's off. I put my, uh, end up putting my meter in it. Just wanted to have kind of two points of reference in here, but use my meter also. If you've never seen one of these, check, I got a review on these. I put a link below and uh, I keep these in my Amazon store where you can pick one up, but I love those meters. I think they work great. I'm going to burp this. I call it burping it. We're going to let all the heat out. See if we can uncover it here. Woo! There we go. Grab my thermo pin and really I'm just I'm checking for yeah it's tender more than I'm checking temperature temperature I know was good on my on my other meters my grill mini and my and my meter so it's good I'm just gonna let this sit here we'll uh, cover it I just want to get that big steam out let it cool down and uh, once it cools off enough we'll slice it up and let y'all see how it turned out now our brisket has cooled down some and I'm going to try to slice it up and I, I tell you what I messed up a while ago. Tell you what I did when I wrapped it I meant to go fat down toward the fire. I did not do that. So our top side got a little little harder maybe than I would have wanted it to uh, if I had the fat down toward the fire. So make sure you don't make that mistake. Kind of a rookie mistake that I did today but I bet you this is going to slice up real nice. I'm just going to take it and we're going to separate this flat and the point. Let y'all see it. See what that looks like. You can look at it and you can tell this brisket. Look at that moisture just running out of it. That is a pretty brisket. Move the point to the side. See if we can slice off some of this flat. That is pretty. I'm going to pick it up. Oh, wow. Look at that. There you go. This will lay across that knife. That is what you're looking for right there. That quarter inch thick slice. Beautiful, beautiful smoke ring. Lays across. Mmm. Mmm. Man. That brisket. It just tastes good. That barrel house cooker with the little mesquite and oak on it and of course that Kingsford charcoal I tell you what y'all can see on the close-ups beautiful smoke ring tender brisket tasted wonderful I just I can't talk about it enough the, the the smoke is great it it looked pretty uh, the seasoning you know that uh pit maker that pit maker second rub that I put on there really did check out some of their rubs you go to the pit maker side and you can you can see the the different rubs that they have on there but that that was a great one it finished off that brisket on top of my regular brisket rub excellently but tasted fantastic i cannot gripe at all nice nice bark great brisket great taste great flavor An another great cook on the barrel house cooker i'll tell you what great brisket nice and tender took it to about 203 204 and it, it just cooked up great fantastic turned out good Lay across a knife blade. That's what you want to see one do. And uh, hope you enjoy it. And remember, folks, moist, tender, and this was a Packer brisket. It was not a prime. It wasn't a choice. It wasn't even a select. It was a non-graded Packer brisket that turned out fantastic. Going to finish slicing this up. We're going to get ready for, for a, a great lunch with it. But thanks for stopping by Texas Stock Cuisine. I always do appreciate it. Remember to give me that thumbs up. Remember to share this on your social media. Tell your friends and family about us. We'll see y'all down the road on Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine. How them boys put food away beats all I've ever seen.